Hey, hello, this is Billy from the Billy C DIY channel. I'm creating this 3D design for another crystal radio called the Variometer Crystal Radio that works because of mutual inductance. The inductance of the combined coil, the red one and the orange one, will change when the inner coil, the orange one, rotates. This is because the mutual inductance of each coil will increase depending on how much overlap the two coils are or decrease if it's uh, wind in the reverse order. So by pairing this with a fixed capacitor, you can tune into radio stations of the frequency range you want to. This design is now free for download you can go to the link in my YouTube de video description. Uh, go to the Fingerest site where I put this in and download. Let's look at the circuit diagram. The top one is for the MOSFETs, FET as a detector. The bottom one is for the diode or crystal as the detector. So they both work similarly. The most important thing is look at L1 and L2. They are the variometer. L1 is the inner coil, L2 is the outer coil. When they rotate, it will create a variable inductor. Then to pair it up, we have a fixed capacitor, actually two of them, C1 and C2, because the variometer's uh, range cannot cover the full spectrum. So we need to have two different size fixed capacitor to tune to the low band or the high band of the AM broadcast station. So C1 is 330 PF for the low band. C2 is around 150 PF for the high band. In order to receive the radio station, you need uh, to connect to the antenna and the ground. So there's a one ground terminal and three antenna terminals. Depending on the sensitivity and selectivity you're looking for, you can connect to the different antenna terminals. A1 will have the highest sensitivity, whereas A2 the lowest. However, the selectivity will increase if you connect to A2. Also, it also depends on the length of your antenna. You may need to have a matching impedance by selecting the different antenna terminals. So after printing, you find this 3D model and you can try to assemble it. It should be uh, easy and there is a knob that connects the two coils together and they are positioned for the detector socket and also the audio jack. I'll show it to you as we go along. First thing we need to do is is to put some solder on some M4 copper screws so we can uh, solder the antenna terminal and ground terminal directly to the screws which will be used to connect to either a telescopic antenna which also have the M4 screw hole or you can use alligator clip to connect the antenna cable to it. Then let's try to fit in the audio jack and the detector socket um, so you can use some glue to hold it together. Now we can screw the copper screw in place. After finishing, you can test it with your telescopic antenna. Next, we need to prepare the pins for our detector socket. I'm using a 5-pin socket because there's four pins for the MOSFET and one more pin for the diode. My detector is called 3DQ, it's a MOSFET. So let's try to fit it in. To remove the high frequency components, we will solder a 4700 PF fixed capacitor 
in parallel with the audio jack. Let's start winding the coil. We've got a small one and a big one. You can use the magnet wire 0.3 mm in diameter or this list wire is 0 0.04 times 12 strands of inner insulated wire. We need to wind 40 turns for each coil, the big and the small ones. The coil frame is designed with the odd number of petals, so you can wind a spider web or a basket coil. However, after making this video, I find that the variometer range, if you wind it in this way as a spider or a basket coil with interlaced uh, turns in and out, the variometer range will will be smaller. Hence later on I remake it and using just a flat coil, just wind it on the outside. Let's test the range of the variometer. We'll connect to an LC meter to test the inductance. On one extreme is around 90 PF, on the other extreme is around 249 PF, around 2.5 times range. But that's why we'll need a different fixed capacitor to make sure it covers the full range. In this circuit, I use two, but you may need to use three. Uh, depending on the situation. So let's put the rest of the component in place and do the soldering. Then we need to create the tapping points, count five turns from one side of the big coil and solder it to antenna terminal A2. The interconnection of the big coil and the small coil, that point there, will be another tapping top point for connection to antenna A3. Once everything is ready, you can solder the tapping point and the wires from the coil to the M4 screws to connect to the antenna terminals. Next, we are going to put in the knob. So we need to make way for the space. So you need to use a twister to push away the wires of the coil so you can slowly push it in. Then you put a stop, stopper. So it will be all secure as you rotate the inner coil. Okay, I will skip the rest of the narratives for soldering. Uh, you hear music. At the end, we will have the testing video. So stay on. Let me test the resonance circuit, make sure it can cover the lowest broadcast range 500 kHz plus the higher one. So I will start the testing video. Thanks for watching, please continue to watch. Um, if you like my videos, please click like, subscribe, share with your friends. Don't forget to click the bell so I can tell you when I have a new video. Thank you.
概一些这个生态的敏感性啊，现在我们目前的一个。咁其实呢个先系一个最理想嘅一个。